Good evening, I'm Tom Pearson, back once again here at the Newmarket International Festival of One Act Plays. And with me now is John Dowson, and John is the artistic director of the festival, but he's a lot more than that as well. John, tell us a little bit about how the festival actually got started, because I think you were, you were there right from the beginning, weren't you? Yeah, uh, do you want me to right, go back to, to the actually uh, Right back, I mean, how did it all start? Well, it all started back in uh, 1994 uh, with Ross Bailey, a, f a friend of mine who was involved in the La Theater and a couple of others. And uh, we said we would have a, a one-act play festival to raise funds for local charities. As a matter of fact, the, the New Market, uh, what's it called, the uh, New Roads Performing Arts Center was just built. And they needed some... Uh, sound equipment for people hard of hearing so they could buy, get it, uh, you know, those little things they could get. The hearing aids. Yeah. And uh, so that's what we raised the funds for. And what we did, we had local uh, community theater groups uh, from the area submit a one-act play festival. We had a little contest. And uh, we did two plays a night for uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Pickering College in their uh, auditorium. That's where it started. We were there until about 1997, uh, I think it was, and then uh, then we moved to the uh, Theater on Main uh, in 2000, and we performed there as a one-act play festival. But it, it, it took on a different life. Uh, it became this. We had to rent the place, the store, so we decided to put on a whole season of plays along with the One Act Festival. And that closed down in 2001, uh, uh, 11 rather, 10 years later. And uh, it started up when we got a letter from Canada Revenue Agency said, if you don't do something and raise some money, then we'll have to cancel your, uh, your charter. I said, what? So well, why don't we do something to keep the thing going? So uh, we put on a one-act play, a, a, a reading of Christmas Carol, and raised some funds, and we gave some money to the uh, uh, food bank, and uh, then we did it again the next year. People started sending scripts. The community theater groups would, weren't involved in a while ago. And now you have uh, uh, scripts coming from around the world. I think last year we had about, there was about 100 scripts that were sent in, and this oh. year roughly around the same. Yeah. Coming from uh, pretty much around the, the English speaking world, if I'm not mistaken. How did you get to that level? Well, well the, we, we, we were advertising on a website for um, scripts, no, for, for actors, <laughs> and people started sending scripts in. And it, uh, all of a sudden, we were a, a, a one-act play festival now. We weren't for people... Now you so, have, and so it happened by accident? Yeah, it happened by accident. <laughs> and so now you need to hire, uh, recruit actors and find directors and to try and put this together. Um, and we, this is the first time we'd ever had that. We, I think we got about 50 plays to read. And uh, we managed to cast them. There, there was a... Uh, a woman from Aurora, I forgot her name now, she had that play that she wrote. It was a really a weird play. And that was the uh, world premiere. Her father used to work at CBC, and this was a world premiere play. So there was, we put on uh, four plays that first year, <laughs> just on Friday and Saturday. And then the next year, we advertise again, and we were getting hundreds of scripts. And now you have world premieres coming from everywhere from Hollywood to Australia, yeah. to uh, across Canada and the United States. Um, and, and there's, I uh, was talking to uh, Dale Sheldrake, one of the directors of Ugg Ug and the Boar, the first play. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Um, he was mentioning that uh, it was Jim Gogan. Um, he had managed to attract uh, Jim Gogan, who's a, a writer from Hollywood. Yeah, he said it was 2017, he sent in this play. We said, what? We're getting a play from Hollywood? And uh, we got them from all over. So we this play, Warren and the Bear, and uh, Dale took it on. And uh, Jim Gagan, he uh, is one of the co-founders of the Disney series, uh, Zack, the, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Which, which is a, a Disney, uh, Disney... Disney series, yeah, on the Disney Channel. So... Uh, that's what happened. And last year, 
the play from Australia, uh, the Australian uh, playwright uh, had a viewing party because it was uh, the plays were uh, live streamed on Facebook in uh, Australia, Sydney, Australia, 11 o'clock in the morning, and we were performing at 8 o'clock at night, <laughs> Friday night. So the people were performing from yesterday into tomorrow. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now, last year was, uh, or two years ago, uh, because of COVID, <coughs> we, could, we couldn't have the, uh, the festival in, uh, in, in, a, in a, any venue. But last year they allowed it um, for half, I guess, half the audience. Yeah, so you've yeah. had the challenges, but yeah. you still managed to, to, to pull it off last year. How, how did you do that? Um, I don't know how. <laughs> All I know is that. The people came in where you do this and you do that and or you tear up your hair and somebody leaves and, and uh, we ended up, you, you arrive, oh, yeah, as our stage manager and then uh, who, uh, Mary Rose Talani, she came out of the woodwork and she start, said, uh, knows a lot of people for direct and it just all came together and we rehearsed. And we ended up, uh, well, actually, we filled the place every night, but we only allowed 80 people anyway. Yeah. So for, uh, what excites you about uh, the, play, the, the festival this year? Is, is there anything, anything about the festival this year um, that's exciting you this year, personally? Yeah, this is, a, this is really something that's interesting. We got 100 and some odd plays, we had to read them. But quite a few of the plays, not a lot, maybe 20 or so, were uh, only 15 pages. Looked like, looked like there's a minute a page. So it looked like 15, 20 minutes, not the usual 40 or 45 minutes. Uh, but they were good plays. So the reading committee this year decided, well, what we should do is put two of these short plays on and then a longer one act way after. So we're actually going to be showing, uh, having three plays instead of the usual two. So it would be nine plays over three nights uh, instead of the six. And there's now the, the Sunday matinee with our youth, the youth edition. And as I understand it, in, uh, uh, from recent uh, information I received, there's actually going to be three youth plays as well. Yeah, uh, the VUTC Young Company run by Kira uh, Rosenblum, she has a group of actors, young people, who wrote the play, their play, even put, wrote the music, and are acting in it. So there's going to be more than just a workshop. It's yeah, those, those came from her workshop, the yeah. two new plays. She had written one called Emotional, which will be part of the festival. And then she's got two new uh, young directors, uh, a young playwrights, and two new, the, there'll be world premieres as well, all three of those oh, uh, yeah. plays. So. Uh, that is really something we're looking forward to. and. Uh, our, our objective is to eventually try and work towards things like Shaw Festival, Stratford, and make Newmarket the place to destination to be so that you can see one act plays. And, and of course, one of the challenges for, for festivals of, of this nature is funding. How can, uh, uh, can people get involved with uh, being sponsors or funding, uh, fun, funding the, the, the festival during the year or, or at this time of year? Is it well, we, uh, the festival group works pretty skinny. <laughs> we don't have a lot of money. That's why I'm mentioning it. <laughs> and, and all of the people who are involved. It's amazing how you pull it off with, with such little funding, really. And, and they're all volunteers, everybody. Uh, the actors, the directors, the, the people like yourself, all volunteers. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's it, uh, we, we hope to be able to stretch it one later on to maybe even go for a, a whole week and then turn it really into a sort well, of a Stratford type of thing. There's one way they can uh, actually uh, contribute, and that is by showing up, buying a ticket and coming. You can get tickets at www.newticks.caa for those that see this before the festival. John, it's been a pleasure. I think you're an under, underestimated and undervalued and underappreciated person in the town of Newmarket. You've done a great job with this festival, keeping it alive for the, this many years. And I, for one, really appreciate the effort that you put in to make it happen. Thank you for coming out tonight, John, as well. There was also a Rod Ur Urquhart in the, in the early Rod years. Urquhart as well. Yes, Rod. Up, up uh, until last year. Yeah. And, and Rod, uh, you know, he, he, 
he's been a great uh, 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 booster of the event as well. Yeah. And in fact, he, he got a he, he wrote wrote a play last year called Gilda, which was our was our first youth theater uh, show. Yeah. Uh, directed by uh, Miss uh, Rosenblum. So yeah, uh, it was uh, also uh, a real bonus to have him involved over the years as well. And uh, hopefully. We'll see him back in the future. I know he had had, had some uh, health issues at, at one point, and uh, um, we really do appreciate everything he's done over the years as well. Yourself keeping this uh, this alive and, and running, and hopefully we'll turn it into uh, you know uh, the longest running festival that Newmarket has has seen. Yeah, we'll see you September eight, nine, and ten this year. And the eleventh. Yeah. That's the Matt Bay Show. See you guys there. I'm Tom Pearson. Thank you for tuning in.